Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And today, let's talk about why we would want to tie tube flies. There are some advantages and a few disadvantages to tube flies, like anything else in life. You don't get a free lunch, there are issues, but generally speaking, tube flies offer some advantages. So let's look at two right here. First off, this is uh, my BNC thingy tied on a spay hook, sort of semi spay style. You know, I've put a few bit of effort into making this one look pretty. It's tied on a typical uh, spay hook, which has a, uh, you know, a gape that droops down quite a long shank. So you're saying to yourself, okay, where's the advantage in this and where's the disadvantage? Well, one of the advantages, it looks great. When you tie on an old spay hook, boy, they look beautiful. I mean, they're elegant. They're beautiful flies. Uh, they appeal to the aesthetic in us. Let's get over it. I mean, like, let's, my resistance to tube flies was because I thought they were ugly, all right? And I wanted to tie pretty flies. So I tie a fly like this, and I mean, it's got, I mean, it's got all sorts of stuff. It's got the peacock curl, little butt section, and it's got multiple floss and things in there and you know it's a pretty fly so i'm looking at this thinking to myself you know if i put this on a tube version well it started off as a tube version i'm thinking so let's make this pretty and i'll do it in the spay hook but the reality is in lower flows this thing hangs like this and the odds are the fish are going to miss it plus if i snag up and damage the hook it's garbage the other thing because it's a relatively long shank is that when you're fighting a fish, they, if they're, when they're head shaking, they can actually work that hook free. So your ability to hang on to a fish is reduced with a, a fly like this. So let's look at a tube fly. So you're gonna to say to yourself, well, this is an alley shrimp. You're gonna to say to yourself, well, there are pretty prettier versions of this out there and I'd agree with you there are it's not the nicest looking fly out there is it however you know when I put this tube fly uh, on with a hook I run the tip it through it I tie the hook on I can make this swim hook point up which helps me with snags it's also a light wire hook and what's interesting, this is tied on aluminum tube, but I could have tied it on brass or copper. So which means the weight is at the front end of the fly, not at the back end. And we don't get the tendency for the thing to ride like this. It rides closer to level because with the light wire hook at the back, the weight is in the front of the fly, not in the back of the fly. And when you're dealing with flies like this, where the hook is in the, sorry, the weight is in the gape, they tend to ride with the gape down and even in relatively fast currents they don't ride level they never run totally level uh, and the slower the currents the more they will sag and the chances are the fish will miss the hook when they grab hold of the fly with this you know with that particular hook being way back here and the fly running more or less level when the, when a fish comes up behind it and grabs it they have a greater chance of grabbing the hook Another uh, advantage to tube flies is when you hook a fish, the fly tends to go up the leader, and it's just this little light wire short shank hook that's stuck in the fish's jaw. They don't have the ability to lever it out that they, like they do with a long hook. You take a long shank streamer hook, a fish can lever that out because as it head shakes, that hook is torquing. The other thing, of course, is when that tube fly goes up the leader, it's away from the fish's teeth. I mean, I've had lovely tied flies. First fish, they're trashed because the, you know it, it was in the jaw of the fish and when they're going like this, they're wrecking the fly. So that's another advantage. You hang on to them longer, your flies last longer because they're not you know, being chewed up by the fish. Another issue that you get into, let's say for example, I put this hook with point down. Let me get the tail out of the way here. I put it point down and I snag up. Well, this is a light wire hook and I use light wire hooks on my tube flies. So what happens is I'm snagged, I'm yanking on it. I'm usually an eight or 10 pound test usually with flies like this. And I'm yanking on it. And you know what happens when I pull? I open the hook up and 
I can get it off the snag. Now I've retrieved my fly. I replaced the hook, it's now damaged, it's useless. Put another new hook on there, you know, put it back together, and I'm back fishing with the same fly. So I'm not constantly losing flies to the bottom. I'm losing hooks because the hooks get damaged. Sometimes they can be straightened out and repaired, other times no, but the point of the matter is all I'm losing is the hook, not the fly. With this beastie, you know, I put about, I don't know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes into this fly. If it snags up, that's, you know, gonna really tick me off, okay? Because if I lose this fly, I mean, I remember one instant, I put an incredible amount of effort into a beautiful spay fly. It's one of the first times I went out and go, okay, do your utmost. You know you can tie a beautiful fly. Tie a beautiful spay fly. Third cast, lost to a rock. Going, I'm not doing that anymore. It was about half an hour worth of work of that fly. And three casts, it was gone. So this business of snagging up, with this I lose the fly, with this I lose the hook. You know, you think about it. Another thing you want to think about if you're really serious about catch and release, if you're dealing with being, you know, a, a tube fly where you can change the hooks, uh, one of the rivers I fish, uh, there are sections that are killed and which are barbless hook, and there are other sections of the river which are kill sections where no hook restrictions. So if I was interested in keeping a fish uh, or, and obeying the re regulations, I could use a barbless hook in the no-kill section, and when I got to the kill section and I wanted to keep a fish, I could swap out this hook for a treble, a double treble, uh, sorry, a uh, double or a single, all of them barbed, and have a better chance of hooking the fish and keeping it on the, on the hook than you would with a barbless. So if you are going between different regulatory environments where you're going from between barbless and barbed, where you're going, you're going to catch and release here, but you're going to keep a fish there, a tube fly gives you the ability to change hooks. Uh, going between barbed and not barbed, or uh, you know, double, single, treble, whatever the case may be. We have that ability to flip around and change the hook depending on the circumstance. The other thing too is if you're concerned about hook gape, uh, you could use, uh, if you're fishing mostly smaller fish, you could take a fly, put a small gape hook on here, and if it's fishing in slower currents, that light wire small gape hook won't drag the butt end of the fly down. Now you're fishing in heavier currents for bigger fish. You could put a heavier, bigger gape hook on, but because the currents are heavier, it still rides relatively level. So you're able to adjust the weight of the hook to the conditions you're facing. So the ability to change your hooks depending on your regulatory environment or the, or the river conditions or the size of the fish, whatever it is, you can take the same fly and keep changing the hooks depending on what you need to do. So when you're dealing with you know, two flies, you know, you can change the hooks, we can swap out a damaged hook, we can often get them off of snags easier, and because the hooks are light and short shank, we tend to keep fish on better than when we're fishing with a longer shank. The downside, they're not pretty, okay? Okay, if I mount the water and you ask me, what one do I want to fish with? You know, a lovely tied fly on a classic, you know, salmon hook or a tube. Oh, I'll always go with this one. I, 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 I mean, they just look nice. But guess what I catch most of my fish on? Your choice. You want to look pretty? You want to catch fish. So there you go. The advantages of tube flies. Cheers.